Vikings, the seafaring warrior race born of Scandinavia in the late 700s. Known for their raids on England, France and the Mediterranean, they're commonly depicted as tall, hulking barbarians who plundered their way through the world. However, modern historians and media has taken a deeper look into the Norsemen, showing a more peaceful side to the Vikings. Nowadays, thanks to modern TV shows such as The Norsemen, The Last Kingdom or the eponymous Vikings, some stories about their heroes live on. Nevertheless, this race of people has several heroes you may not have heard of, so we wanted to bring them to your attention. I'm Josh. And I'm Dave of Nerd and Dragon, and today we are looking at 10 of the greatest Vikings. Eric the Red Born Eric Thorvaldsson in Norway, Eric the Red earned his nickname for his red hair and fiery temper. Eric fled with his family to Iceland after his father was banished from Norway for murder. Eric himself was then accused of manslaughter and exiled from Iceland in 982. After leaving his Icelandic home, he sailed west to an uncharted island, which he named Greenland in an effort to entice settlers. Several years later, Eric returned to Iceland and organised a fleet of 25 ships to carry colonists to Greenland. Only 14 of the vessels survived the journey. By 986, two communities had been established on Greenland and at its peak, the Greenland colony had an estimated 5,000 residents. Following Eric's death, Greenland's Norse communities continued on before being abandoned in the 14th and 15th centuries. Leif Eriksson Born in Iceland in around 970, Leif later moved to Greenland, where his father, Eric the Red, founded the first Norse settlement. In around the year 1000, Leif sailed off in search of a territory that had been spotted years earlier by an Icelander named Bjarni Herjolfsson, whose ship had blown off course en route to Greenland. During his expedition, Leif reached an area he called Helluland, which is believed to be Baffin Island, before travelling south to a place he dubbed Markland, which is modern-day Labrador. The Vikings then set up camp at a location that is believed to be Newfoundland, and explored the surrounding region, which Leif named Vinland, because of the grapes and berries discovered there. After Leif returned to Greenland with valuable timber cargo, other Norsemen decided to journey to Vinland. However, the Viking presence in North America was short-lived, possibly due to clashes with hostile natives. Evidence of a Norse settlement in North America was discovered in the early 1960s on the northern tip of Newfoundland. Leif Erikson was the first European to set foot on the North American continent, landing there almost 500 years before Christopher Columbus. Olaf Tryggvason Olaf was born around 968 and was raised in Russia following the death of his father. In 991, Olaf led a Viking invasion of England, which resulted in a great victory at the Battle of Maldon. Afterward, the English paid off the Vikings to prevent future attacks. This type of payment became known as Danegeld. In 994, Olaf and the King of Denmark, Svein Forkbeard, launched another raid on England and gained themselves more Danegeld. In 996, Olaf used his plunder in Danegeld to invade Norway and was crowned king after its ruler Hakon the Great was murdered. As king, Olaf forced his pagan subjects to convert to Christianity. These actions earned him many enemies, including his old friend Svein Fortbeard, who wanted to restore Danish rule in Norway, and the son of the former king Hakon. In the year 1000, Olaf was ambushed by his rivals in a battle at sea. However, instead of surrendering, he jumped over the side of his ship, never to be seen or heard from again. Ragnar Lothbrok Ragnar Lothbrok, nicknamed Hairy Breaches, was a legendary Viking commander who became a scourge of England and France through his raiding antics. His most famous raid being one he led on Paris. Ragnar sailed his fleet of 120 ships up the River Seine, faced a French army led by their king in battle and defeated them, forcing the French forces into retreat. Ragnar and his raiding party eventually reached Paris, pillaging, plundering and occupying the city. The Vikings withdrew after receiving a payment of 7,000 French leavers from the French king. Ultimately, Ragnar's raiding lifestyle caught up with him as he managed to get shipwrecked on the Northumbrian coast. Ragnar and his crew survived the wreck, but after meeting the Northumbrians in battle, most of his men were killed and he was captured by Ayla, king of Northumbria who ordered him executed by throwing him into a pit filled with poisonous snakes. 
On hearing the news of the manner of their father's death, Ivor the Boneless and Uber swore to avenge him. The sons of Ragnar crossed the North Sea with a huge fleet known as the Great Heathen Army. They captured King Edmund of East Anglia. Ivor had Edmund tied to a tree, whereupon Vikings shot arrows into him until he died. They then sacked the city of York and met King Ayla in battle, who was defeated and captured. Ayla was subjected to the Blood Eagle, a gruesome Viking method of torture and execution. It was performed by cutting the ribs of the victim by the spine, breaking the ribs so that they resembled blood-stained wings, and pulling the lungs out through the wounds in the victim's back. Egil Skallagrimson The archetypal warrior poet Egil was a remarkable character, a complex man who was prone to violent rage, but also capable of great poetic sensitivity. His poems are widely considered to be among ancient Scandinavia's finest, whilst bloodlust and fury also made him famous. Egil was born in Iceland and composed his first poem aged three. He killed for the first time when he was just seven years old, taking an axe to another boy's head after being cheated in a game. It was the first murderous act of a bloody life filled with pillaging and plundering, which included the killings of his father-in-law and both of his wife's uncles. Egil also fought at the Battle of Brunanburh in the service of King Ethelstan against Vikings. In this battle, Egil's brother was killed and Ethelstan gave Egil two chests filled with silver in compensation. Ultimately, Egil's family returned to its farm in Iceland, where he remained a force to be reckoned with in local politics. Before Egil died in his 80s, he buried his silver and in a final act of violence, murdered the servants who helped him bury his treasure. Ivor the Boneless A son of Ragnar Lothbrok, Ivor the Boneless, despite suffering from a reported bone deficiency, was a formidable leader and Viking warrior, being carried into battle on a shield using a bow to take out his enemies. According to the tale of Ragnar Lothbrok, Ivor's bonelessness was a result of a curse. His mother, Aslag, was Ragnar's third wife. She was described as a vulva, a type of seer or clairvoyant. She said that she and her husband must wait three nights before consummating their marriage after his return following a long separation while he was in England raiding. However, Ragnar was overcome with lust after such a long separation and he did not heed her words. As a result, Ivor was born with weak bones. Ivor was a master of strategy and battle tactics and though physically weak was known to be wise and cunning. He is best known for invading several Anglo-Saxon kingdoms with his two brothers, and where he killed King Edmund of East Anglia and performed a blood eagle on King Ayla of Northumbria. Eric Bloodaxe Born Eric Haraldson, Eric was one of the many sons of King Harald Fairhair of Norway, believed to be one of 16 to 20. He is said to have participated in Viking raids across Europe from the age of 12, and quickly learnt that violence was the most effective way to distinguish yourself in the Viking community. Eric gained the nickname Bloodaxe by murdering all but one of his brothers. Rollo, the Duke of Normandy Rollo was a Viking leader of Danish or Norwegian origin who began conducting raids on France in the 9th century. In 911, under the Treaty of St. Clair sur Apete, King Charles the Simple gave Rollo land in what is now called Normandy, meaning Northman's land, in an effort to have him protect the country from other Viking raiders. Rollo later expanded his territory and ruled successfully until his death in 928. In 1066, one of Rollo's descendants, William the Bastard, led the successful Norman invasion of England. William the Conqueror, as he became known, went on to serve as King of England for over 20 years until 1087. Harold Hardrada Hardrada translates as Hard Ruler, a reputation Harold lived up to with his aggressive and ruthless approach to leadership and his tendency to settle disputes with brutality. He is widely considered to have been the last great Viking ruler, taking the Norwegian throne in 1046 and presiding over a period of peace and progress. Hardrada fell in battle in 1066 when shot by an arrow through the throat at the Battle of Stamford Bridge. King Canute the son of Denmark's King Svein Forkbeard, Canute aided in his father's conquest of England in 1013. However, when Svein died in 1014, the Saxon king, Athelred the Unready, who had been exiled, returned to power. 
Athelred passed away two years later, leaving the throne to his son, Edmund Ironside. Later in 1016, Canute defeated Ironside at the Battle of Ashingdon. The king signed a treaty that gave Canute power over part of England. Within weeks of the treaty being signed, Edmund died and all of England came under Canute's rule. His reign there brought stability after years of raids and battles. Denmark, Norway and even parts of Sweden also came under Canute's control, forming an empire. When he died in 1035, his son, Harold Harefoot, became King of England, serving until his death in 1040. Josh here! Thanks for sticking with us to the end. Dave and I are massive fans of Viking culture and often go to festivals or shows about them, so we loved making this. We hope you enjoyed it. Are you fans of The Last Kingdom or Vikings? And who is your favourite Viking hero? Let us know down in the comments below. Liking and subscribing helps us out loads. Thank you all for watching!